about low pressure and rising air. I'm right here in the middle of a storm in Northern California. It's whipping through here. And let's take a look at some of the characteristics of a low pressure. Okay, well that was quite a storm. It finally blew by, so let's talk about characteristics of a low pressure. Now last time we talked about a high pressure, and remember that is sinking air that is turning to the right in the northern hemisphere and it's diverging at the surface. Now if you can remember that one, then everything with a low is the opposite. But let's take a look at those characteristics of a low pressure system or less dense air. So again, we'll start out with, you know, near the ground, air is denser. Okay, so relatively speaking, there's higher pressure at the ground and then it is spread out, you know, as you go up in elevation or altitude. Okay, and then this pressure at the surface can change from hour to hour, day to day, or place to place. Now, let's take a look at some of the characteristics of low pressure. Okay, so typically number one, the opposite of a high, is that air is rising. Okay, so I've put an icon here. You can see a hot air balloon that is rising because of the hot air. Okay, now let's take a look at the second characteristic. Okay, the second characteristic is that it's actually spinning the opposite way. Okay, it is spinning to the left. Okay, so it turns to the left. And that is counterclockwise. Okay, again, those of you who live in the southern hemisphere, it's the opposite. Everything's the opposite. Maybe going uh, to the right. Uh, okay, and then finally, let's take a look at our third one. Okay, our third one is that it's actually converging at the surface. So as air rises in the middle of a low pressure system, it is drawing in air, it is spinning to the left or counterclockwise, and then it is converging at the surface. Okay, so let's take a look at how air can rise, and then maybe we'll revisit this with a diagram. First of all, heat can rise, I mean air can rise because of heat. You know, that's, that's pretty obvious. Last time we talked about air sinking because there's a lack of heat or it's cold. And this is thermally induced. Okay, and I've shown that here with some icons. The second way that air can be forced up to create a low pressure is, let's say, on the windward side of a mountain. So as a storm is coming through, it is forced up the mountain Okay, and we call that orographic lifting. And that then indeed starts to create air to expand and it actually can condense into water vapor. If we continue to do that and there's enough water vapor and moisture in the atmosphere, that can actually rain or snow. We call that precipitation. And that's why it's much greener as you get up to uh, the high Sierras. You can just definitely see that here in Northern California. We go from the oak woodlands to the coniferous, pines and the fir trees and others and then and we finally get to the crest where uh, it really dumps for example at Donner Summit which is only 7200 plus feet right near Lake Tahoe okay and then finally let's take a look at our last one and I let me just diagram this before I move on uh, so here's the storm coming in like we just had as it forces its way up the mountain that's when it is going to rise and create a low pressure system we can actually read that on the barometer and it will then hopefully maybe you know because we're going through a drought right now uh, rain up there in the high sierras and snow and create a greener landscape all right so i'm going to race this now okay so we've got oh boy again the low pressure system i want to talk about fronts and i'm going to have to grab my windex here and because the black just sure doesn't want to come off Okay, but we're taking a look at fronts here. Okay, now in the case of a front, what's happening is that typically, let's say starting Halloween, our weather really changes here. Today it's in October, our weather is close to 90 degrees, but on Halloween, the cold air from Alaska and out there off the Bering Sea, 
the Aleutian Low, those storms come in and they create what we call a front. And that's called frontal lifting. So <clears throat> basically that air is cold, dense air. Let's take a look at that. I put a little icon right in here for front. You can see my cold air with the rising arrow. This is dynamically induced. In other words, the front is moving forward. We're talking about motion again, and that will force air up in front of it. Okay, so here we are coming in off the Pacific Ocean. Um, perhaps this is uh, thousands of feet. I'm just going to say, you know, 10, at least 10,000 feet. I've been in a small airplane where you can feel that air coming in, and I'm at, let's say, 5,000 feet. Okay, so that air is much denser. Another story I have is I was, you know, it gets very windy before these fronts come in. And one time I was in a canyon where all that air is channelized and it actually broke my tent as that air came whipping through. We went from nice conditions uh, in one of these canyons in the Sierra Nevadas to really icy. You could see snow everywhere. And what that does is forces air up in front of it. Again, the number one mantra for low pressure is rising air, less dense air. And a front does that. And typically when the air then rises, uh, it can create a cloud, it adiabatically expands and cools, and then it can wring out the moisture and we might get some precipitation in front of that front. And those are basically the, the main characteristics of a low pressure. All right, I wanted to finish up with this diagram talking about low and high pressure. Over here to the right, you can see a warm front, it is symbolized in red, and a cold front that is symbolized with these blue triangles. Okay, and you can see that it does have a swirling motion, it's converging at the surface, and you get a sense it does actually spin upwards in the middle and then diverge at aloft. In other words, it kind of spreads out. All right, so let me go back over here to the whiteboard, finish this up. Okay, here's our diagram again. Over here on the east coast in the southeast, we'd have a storm that was going through a low pressure. Here in the west, in the four corner states, we'd have a high pressure. So if you were to, uh, for example, let's see here in the southeast, and you were going to diagram all the molecules, okay? So the front comes in like this. Here's our cold front. Now this is really dense here, right? Okay, what it's going to do is force this air up. Okay, and as that storm moves through, basically it's going to change the barometric pressure here. So let's say it was at 29.92, I'm going to write that down, 29.92, and let's say the hour was 1300, that's 1 o'clock in the afternoon on October 5th. All right, so at that moment in time, at that place, let's say it's in, uh, trying to look, it looks like it might be in Kentucky where that storm is going through. That's the center of the low pressure. Now let's change this to, uh, let's change this to maybe uh, just a couple hours later. So 1500, that's three o'clock in the afternoon. And of course, the whole dynamics of this will change, but let's just look at the air molecules. So that front has come through and Initially, that pressure was 29.92. All right, there it is, symbolized with the air molecules. And now, let's say this drops to, um, it's quite a bit. Let's just say it's a 1.2, 29.12. It has gone, the pressure has gone down a couple hours later. And so basically, there will be fewer molecules, a little less pressure. So I'm going to erase some of these dots I had. And at that place, at that time, on that day, the barometric pressure has changed. And so, final question, is it high or low pressure? Guess what, this one's low. In other words, it is now lower than what it used to be. We call that a low pressure system. You'll see these in isobar maps. Um, I will have a, a slight discussion on that in these video series uh, with isobar maps.